Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the Scruffy Looking Nerd Herders podcast. I am your host, Tyler, bringing you all things nerd and geek related, whether they're comic books, movies, TV shows, video games, tabletop games, whatever it is, comic book, nerd, geek related, I'm covering it. And I'm just going to dive right on in. Um, huge news, E3 coverage. We, holy crap, got a new Elder Scrolls game. And I honestly personally thought that this was going to be another Half-Life 3 situation where we wouldn't know if it was ever going to come out or not. Uh, you know, it was always going to be talked about but rarely seen. Uh, but we finally got a teaser trailer and we're, they're, Bethesda's working on another Elder Scrolls game. So I'm, ex- I'm super excited. My girlfriend's stoked because she loves Skyrim. Um, I'm excited just because I, I love that, that whole world that they've built with Elder Scrolls. Um, but then Bethesda also announced, uh, Fallout 76. It kind of got teased a little bit before E3 to kind of build up some hype. Uh, there was a lot of speculation of what it was going to, kind of game it was going to be. People had said there was leaks stating that it was going to have co-op play. Other people said it was going to be more like a World of Warcraft style game. We saw gameplay, um, but we only saw co-op gameplay and like single player co op or single player stuff, you know, just like that. We didn't really, they didn't really go into detail of whether or not it was going to be a Destiny style co op or a World of Warcraft style game, or if it'll be like Borderlands 2, where it's just you and three other people and you're playing through the campaign together. Um, but there definitely seemed to be a lot more humor in the gameplay that they had shown. It was a lot more than what uh, we've typically seen in the past. Um, and. But I have noticed, like on like with whether IGN or Kotaku or uh, any of these other uh, you know websites, gaming media websites have shared stuff about it. The community seems pretty split on it, whether or not um, whether they like it or hate it. Um, I personally think it's cool that they're kind of developing and branching out a little bit with the series. Uh, I, I personally wasn't a huge fan of Fallout Four with the uh, building your communities and then they get attacked and you have to stop what you're doing to go save your community. I, I wasn't a huge fan of that, but I was glad to see him kind of take some risks with it and kind of just branch out and do and add more to it instead of just the same stagnant, oh, here's your hero, here's a story, just play it. And I mean, while that's fun, I feel like that kind of gets old and stale after a while, you know, and by the time you got around to Fallout 4, you know, it was like kind of nice to have something different with the element of having your community that you had to defend and uh, all that. But it was just, it happened way too often. <laughs> you know, you'd be in the middle of a quest and you'd get a notification pop up of your community is under attack. Um, but what's your take on this? You know, do you think adding an online element is good or bad for the series? I know, like I said, the community seems pretty split and I'd be interested to see what you guys think about it. Um, so I'll be sure to post this question on social media, on Facebook with a poll and see, see how everyone thinks about this. Um, Ubisoft had a pretty decent, uh, E3, uh, show. Uh, you know, they, they announced Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I'm a huge fan of the games. I love the story and like the alternate history that, that they have with that, where they, it's... It's, it's, I, I, I love that kind of stuff. and um, But yeah, it's called Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and it takes place, I believe it was in uh, Greece, but you play as a Spartan hero, and there's male and female playable characters, um, and it, it looks fantastic. I'll be sure to post up the trailer on the Facebook page as well. Uh, they also announced The Division 2, which me and my friends, uh, we played Division uh, quite a bit. Uh, I'm not really good at it, <laughs> but they're they're pretty they're pretty good, and um, yeah, I'm so I'm pretty excited about that. There'll be more games for me and and my friends to be able to play, and um, so that I look forward to that. Um, EA had a pretty decent one. The only one that worth noticing for me, anyway. I mean, they announced some more Battlefront Two stuff that they're gonna put out for Battlefront Two in the season. I think they call it Season Two. Um, of the multiplayer stuff. There was going to be, I think, General Grievous, and I want to say Obi-Wan and Anakin. 
And I want to say that they're also going to be doing some, or they already have done, I'm not sure, I, I haven't played in a little bit, um, they're going to be doing some stuff from the Solo a Star Wars movie, which I'm going to cover my review on that at the end of this, so I'll be sure to give everyone a heads up uh, for when I start you know, getting a little spoilerish in case you don't want to hear spoilers. Um, but that'll be the last thing I talk about. So once I say spoilers, if you don't want to, you know, if you don't want to keep listening, you can turn it off there and, uh, you'll, you'll miss just the spoilers of what I, I think of Star Wars or the solo Star Wars story. Um, but Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, uh, sounded interesting. They didn't really show anything, um, other than that, hey, we're working on this game and it's going to be with the studio that did Titanfall in Titanfall 2. Um, so I am i don't know exactly how that's going to work out. I hope it's not just going to be a Titanfall clone and it's just like a first-person shooter or whatever. I, I'm not really looking forward to a first-person shooter Star Wars game. I mean, that's why I love Battlefront is because you can switch between first and third person. I much prefer third person because uh, it, it, I, I like seeing my character. I like you know seeing my character in the world. So I hope that it's not just a strict first person, but I'm interested nonetheless um, because it's supposed to take place between episodes three and four, um, and so it's more than likely going to follow the uh, aftermath of Order sixty six and the downfall of the Jedi Order. Um, their only timetable they gave for release is like near holiday 2019, so we still have like a whole nother year before we start seeing more promo stuff for this. But I'm excited nonetheless. Um, and I don't really think this was covered in E3, but my my friend and fellow listener uh, Archero sent this to me. Uh, but Blizzard is possibly working on a Diablo sequel. Which, for me, I play Diablo 3 a lot. My girlfriend and I play Diablo 3 a lot. Um, and I grew up playing Diablo 2 on Battle.net with my family. My uncle and my aunt played it. And we would connect online. And we would play on Battle.net, on open Battle.net. And uh, um, I love dungeon crawler games. I love the lore of the Diablo world. Blizzard does such a great job creating an atmosphere and a, a world uh, unique to its own, you know, like they have, you know, the world of Diablo, the world of, uh, Warcraft, they have the world, you know, the world of Starcraft, they have the world of, uh, uh, Overwatch that they've created, so I mean, and they're all unique to each other, and it's amazing that they can tell such unique stories across these four different, um, greatly different styles of story, and it's, it's awesome, um, I love watching streamers like Riker. Uh, shout out to him because he does b- build videos for the different character classes and different armor sets. He does seasonal videos of like what builds are good for each season. So yeah, check him out. His name's Riker. He's on YouTube and on Twitch. He's really, really good. I, I love his stuff. Um, but I'd like to see what Blizzard can come up with and... Uh, for a Diablo sequel and see if they'd actually stick with the isometric view dungeon crawler that they've established or if they're going to kind of branch out a little bit. Um, I know Pathfinder's coming out um, with an isometric dungeon crawler and I know like Path of Exile is pretty popular um, and it's isometric view dungeon crawler but I'd I'd be interested to see if they kind of take a different approach on it. See if they do something more akin to like Guild Wars or where it's it's an online RPG but not an MMORPG where it's you know you have your towns and your small cities and uh, or your small towns and your cities and then like the the capital cities and stuff like that where you know there's a marketplace that you can interact with other actual players but then once you go into your own world you're in like your own instance and you play in your own instance I think something like that would be interesting and kind of branch out and get away from um, what they've established essentially as like their style for Diablo. But at the same time, if they were to make a drastic change, I know that would probably uh, alienate a huge chunk of their fan base. Um, so, I mean, what do you think? Do you think uh, Diablo or Blizzard should stick with the tried and true 
Diablo 2 isometric view dungeon crawler, or should they branch out and do something different? You know, should they do something more akin to Dragon Age or, um, like I said, Guild Wars, something like that? Uh, let me know. Um, just, yeah, because I'd be interested to see what you guys think of that as well. So that's the end of E3 slash video game coverage. Um, I haven't really been doing a whole lot of comic book reading. There's one that um, I just started reading. It just came out. It's the Doctor Strange issue one. Um, because I am I am a pretty big fan of Doctor Strange as well. I mean, I wouldn't say huge fan. I mean, you know, Tony Stark's my, my favorite and Iron Fist and all that after that. But um, Doctor Strange, I like him a lot. I especially like... Uh, banana dick cucumber batches <laughs> uh, portrayal of him in the MCU he he does phenomenal um, but this one I'm just going to start out the art for this is beautiful I love the art that they um, have done for this new run of Doctor Strange it's fantastic um, so kind of not uh, I don't want to make it too spoilery because I want you to be able to read it but uh, basically this one it starts off it's essentially a space comic <laughs> i mean it's not it doesn't start off in in space but you you end up doctor strange is in in space so it's kind of like a space story um and by the end of the issue he hasn't he can't use magic anymore which uh, that's that's something different because i mean normally you know doctor strange is this kind of overpowered magician and you know he's like you know like i was never once worried ever that he was gonna die or that he was in peril because he he has you know he has magic he he can just oh, time stone we got this done and you know i'm i know how to do this now and i i defeat the enemy so i was never really worried about it but he, currently he has no magic he can't use any of his items he can't read any of the ancient scrolls he can't read any of the ancient texts it, he can't understand it now so he's like completely cut off from magic like he can't and he can't figure out why um so he's set out on this quest um that he was essentially put on by uh my boy tony stark he gives strange a little bit of guidance uh basically tells him like hey you know if you're the you know Sorcerer Supreme here, there's probably Sorcerer Supremes on other planets, too, that handle with magic. So, uh, you know, I got a ship you can borrow, and you can go check out these other planets and see if, you know, these, these other Sorcerer Supremes can help you out, because, you know, you're essentially the defender of all things supernatural and paranormal. If you can't defend, you know, Earth's screwed, so we need you to do this. So, you know, it's cool to see Tony, you know, kind of step up and move a little bit past his uh know-it-all so they've really like like established tony as like a more mature grown-up like he still has this sarcastic stuff like in the avengers comics you know him and him and cap you know get into like sarcastic quips and with each other and stuff like that so um you know he still has that but it's cool to see him kind of more mature and grown up and helping other characters and uh like was given more guidance and stuff like that, so that was cool. Um, but I'm very interested to in see where the story goes because I do know that the writers of this are kind of fighting an uphill battle uh, because these past few runs of Doctor Strange have been the best stories of Doctor Strange that I've read in years. Um, but like I said, I mean, it, I felt like the pacing of this was it was a little eh uh, at first, but I mean, it was still really good. Um, but I give it a seven and a half out of ten. Um, so yeah, I definitely check that out. I'm gonna try to check check out um, Netflix's comic book that they just released, The Magic Order. I'm gonna try to get that ordered uh, from my local comic shop and get that. And I'll be definitely trying to do a review of that sometime soon. So moving on from comics to tabletop games, um, my family has. Uh, really gotten into tabletop games, which is phenomenal because I didn't really have a whole lot of friends that were really into tabletop games, um, outside of, you know, playing like connect four and stuff like that. And, you know, like they didn't understand that there was like this whole other world of tabletop games out there, um, of nerdy stuff and fun stuff beyond, you know, what you can go into Walmart and buy from the, you know, the board game aisle. Um, 
So one of the ones that my sister brought over was Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Uh, it's a card build.